Let's give it another try, huh? All right, would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, with that, uh, we are here for a special study session regarding the uh, ARPA, the American Rescue Plan Act uh, report. First, we'll have a staff report from Brian Davis, the interim city administrator, which I'll talk a little bit about at the council meeting, and then we'll have an opportunity for council discussion. Brian, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Mayor Farrell, Mayor Farrell, Council President Kochmar, and Deputy Mayor Honda, and members of the Council. Um, we're here to talk about um, ARPA and the uh, funding that we have available to um, help us out with some of our expenses related to um, this particular uh, funding source. So, this is, uh, we're going to go through uh, real quickly what ARPA is, the Treasury final rule, which we are waiting on. Um, we were uh, trying to give council updates on different possibilities for spending. We do have the, the rule from Treasury now, which does help provide us additional guidance as to what is eligible and what is not. Um, what's been either approved, obligated, or um, uh, scheduled to be spent, and then uh, updated projection on the, uh, the, the proposal. So ARPA, the, the precursor to ARPA was the CARES Act, which helped out with economic uh, impacts due to COVID. Uh, cities were largely left out of the CARES Act, and so ARPA uh, not only was the second round of helping economic impacts from COVID, but it, it included cities this time to help with their financial stability and restore their fiscal health. Uh, so we did, this is, this is general for most uh, federal grants, but especially for ARPA. Uh, it's intended to match one-time revenue with one-time expenses. Um, uh, to, it helps us where we should prioritize citywide services um, over four years. So that's an important time frame to remember in what we're discussing. Uh, a couple of things to avoid is create recurring obligations, uh, such that we're not left with a situation to deal with after the funding goes away, and then to avoid uh, audit refund risk, which with federal funds and a four year uh, time frame, if we spent money tomorrow, the, fed, the federal government can come back four years later and say, uh, you know, if you didn't spend this right, and then we'd be obligated to, to pay it back four years after the fact if we don't do it right. So the process thus far, we've calculated our lost revenue, uh, and this is based on a, a, a number of different um, assumptions and formulas that's provided to us um, and captured a list of potential uses. Uh, as I mentioned before, we did get the uh, additional guidance from uh, Treasury on what is eligible. And so now, with that in mind, what will primarily be talking about tonight is prioritizing uh, expenses and messaging that to community and, and then executing those expenses. So real quickly, what the, the final rule from Treasury uh, was, uh, and I'm not going to go through all of these, but basically just for the councils, but you were given this ahead of time, and I, I'm happy to go into one of these individually, but they... Um, you know, the, the council, you had expressed a desire to uh, get a, 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 a clear proposal um, from, uh, for you to consider, and we, we were intentionally proceeding cautiously because we needed to have this additional guidance from Treasury before we presented something to you so that we would avoid giving you a proposal that we would find out, you know, a month later was no longer eligible. So these are some of the things that we did find out. Um, the next slide as well. Uh, most importantly, we can't replenish our reserves, which is a what a lot of cities wanted to do because during COVID we were drawing from reserves, or many cities were drawing from reserves to help out with some expenses that were, um, that didn't have the revenue to do so. Um, so we can't, we can't do that. We can't replace what was lost in any uh, reserve. Um, there is a new formula, which has a new inflation coefficient or, or inflator. Uh, it was 4.2, it's now 5.1, which um, reflects 
Um, our new projection for lost revenue, it was 13 and a half million, it's now 14 and a half. Uh, and then we did, uh, there was additional guidance on um, uh, health and economic eligibility, which includes public safety, and Congress has specifically said that they want uh, demonstrated good violence um, or, or things that would help towards um, uh, reducing gun violence. So this is the, what we have so far. So the overall grant uh, is 19.2 million. What we've calculated uh, based on, again, a number of assumptions and formulas that have been provided to us is, is roughly 14 and a half million. Um, and we'll, we'll discuss that amount later on. We're gonna get into some additional details. I'm just talking big picture at this point. Uh, so what the council has approved already Apart from that has been the, the items that you see there in, in expense categories, administrative and grant related, essential hazard pay, and broadband infrastructure. Um, those have been approved by council. So what's left of, uh, you know, what's unspoken for is uh, $3.7 million, which is restricted to uh, public health and economic impacts. And we'll, again, we'll talk about what that specifically means uh, in, in, a, in a minute. So this slide, um, it, I'm not expecting you to be able to read this, but this shows the, um, uh, the guidance that we received on what is uh, eligible for expenses. And um, these are where we've assigned, or where we're proposing to assign the dollar amounts that I mentioned on the previous slide. Uh, what, what I want you to pay particular attention to is I'm gonna zoom in on, on this, um, this public safety and community assistance. And that's the 3.7 that is that was remaining on uh, on the previous slide. And so a lot of what uh, will be requested of us from the community, um, and in terms of assistance or grants or direct payments, um, a lot of that may potentially come from this source. In addition to, I'm, I'm gonna go back a slide, so not to confuse everyone, go back one. Um, in the, um, I'm gonna go back two, actually. Okay, in addition to uh, no, it's not there. I'm going to get to the next slide. I think it is, so bear with me. Okay, this is the one I'm talking about. So that's in addition to um, what you see at the bottom is, is a $2 million contingency that we still have um, uh, flexibility to, to work with. So this is uh, really what we need to get into tonight uh, and get our hands dirty a little bit on, on this proposal. And this is what we are proposing to the council, what the mayor has recommended for uh, approval. We sat down with each department head and identified the, the lost revenue in each of these categories. And then in addition to that, what is eligible for ARPA funding. And these have been, these um, items have been identified as um, ones that uh, would, that should, we believe that should move forward. And I believe, okay, yes, yeah, so the next steps were cons consideration of potential projects, the lost revenue, government services, and public safety, and then the, the recommendation uh, to uh, identify the, a council approved list of expenses with these funds, and then um, uh, on top of that, the, 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 the category that I mentioned earlier about the uh, community assistance and direct payments and grant funding, that would be something that we would come back to the council for once we have identified what those uh, potential needs are. And that would also be accompanied with an application process, which we don't have uh, determined at this point. So it's merely just to identify that the dollar amount is there and is needed for community assistance what the process is and how that can be, how people can be eligible, how they can apply for the, the grants and how it can be dispersed um, is, we've not uh, uh, ironed out the details of that yet, but uh, just wanted to at least identify that that's where the money uh, could go. So I'm gonna leave it on this slide for discussion purposes. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen, but I'll uh, hopefully, will this still appear on their screen? Okay, so this is on your, Hopefully you have this in your packet. Um, this is the page that we want to uh, discuss with you. So I'm gonna stop sharing and then open it up for questions. 
Okay, Council Member Dawson and then uh, Council Member Doby. Yeah, thank you so much. I have two questions. One is um, with the IT uh, on that on that list. I just wanted clarification. I don't understand what that is, and then I have a, another question. Sure. So there's there's four we, IT yeah. items yeah. on the list. Mm -hmm. One is new software for the court. Okay. Um, the, the the they call it O Court is the name of the software, and so that's. That's in process right now, actually, because it is such a, 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 a pressing need to be uh, moved on now. Um, and then um, the disaster backup is another priority. The dark trace, uh, yeah, I don't know what that two. is, but okay. I'm, I'm, I'm Thomas's uh, security. security. Okay, thank you. Um, these have all been vetted with the department has prior to me coming on, so I'll, I'll admit that I do have some ignorance in some of these. And then password management system is the other one, um, I'm assuming for additional security as well. So disaster, what's that one exactly? And then, yeah, the, those two, the disaster one and the dark. Sure. Place, those two. Okay, I thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have another course. question. Yeah. yeah. I council member. What's the answer? Do you, do you want Brian Davis to answer the question? Please. No, he's going to answer my question. But I have a, another question also unrelated to this. Is okay. that okay? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Council Member Seth Dawson, good question. Uh, both those are security related items. Um, the, the disaster backup recovery is a two part piece. It's uh, consulting dollars to help us uh, establish a plan, uh, kind of take a business objective. So um, the, all the necessary pieces and components of our business, where the risks lie and where we need to have a the disaster recovery plan developed, meaning what's our intended recovery time objective and what do we actually recover? Um, so meaning, is it something that we, you know, let's say for example, our permitting system, does it need to be functional within minutes of an issue? Mm. That costs more. So, you know, there's, there's a, um, so if you want to recover stuff fast, and a lot of it, it's going to cost more. And so if you, if you can wait on some things, it costs a little bit less, depending on the infrastructure and the hardware and the systems that you put in place to do the backup. So what we want to do is, is come at it from a business perspective. So there's a consulting piece of it to look at all of our business processes, where the risks are, and to establish a plan. Mm -hmm. Then on the second part of it, we're, it's, it's a hardware component. And the hardware component is storage and software, or hardware and software, um, to be able to do the backup and recovery system. So we are, we're, we're transitioning what we have right now to a much better, more resilient infrastructure so that we can survive not only a natural disaster, but a cybersecurity incident too. So that's, that's the disaster backup recovery system. Dark Trace is a network security uh, software that um, was originally council approved um, but based on some um, conversations with some other professionals in, in, in my, my, um, my line of work at other cities and, and in the industry, it came to a point that that's probably not the priority one. So with conversation with Mayor Farrell, um, we kind of, we, we switched that to a different uh, software solution. And so we're coming back because security is always about layered approaching, a layered, a layered approach. So. You can't have it, think of it as an onion, and you just keep layering security solutions. Um, there's not one silver bullet, unfortunately, that will just take care of everything. Um, so that's why this is just one more piece to that puzzle or to that onion. Um, hopefully that answers yeah. your question. I'm good, thank you. All right, Can thank I ask you. my second question or wait? <laughs> oh, go ahead, go ahead. Um, this is for Brian. The community assistance, um, you said, I know you don't have a process in place, but does that mean communities would apply for a grant? And do they have to be like a, a, a nonprofit or could a neighborhood, who would be able to apply? Is it okay for a group of people to apply for that yeah, funding? Yeah, and that's the kind of details that we would want to um, iron out. I would say that um, in speaking with, with Sarah, in, in administering the, this type of additional disbursement, the, the most efficient way to do that is to, is to take our current process and to merely expand the disbursement amounts so that those who are rece already receiving um, either general fund or, or block grant uh, dollars, which is, you know, it's, it's never enough to, to, 
to keep it going. So this would just, another uh, uh, approach is to add to that amount that they would get to help them with some of the loss that they've experienced. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Councilmember Doby. Uh, yeah, <coughs> big picture priorities, this chart that starts out at 19 million. Yes. So am I right in assuming this 14 million is what is on this list of things that have been itemized? That's correct. Now, are we committed to those or those, no. are, so, those are for discussion? Yes, so the, so the top four, um, you'll, you'll notice there's a, a column with some dates on it. Yes. That, the council has, has given soft approval for the okay. permit. Even okay, okay. Permit approval for that and those are the dollar amounts to the right that they've approved. And the so everything else has, this is our proposal. And so it's, it's for council discussion or approval or modification at this point. Okay. So my question is when I think, I thought you said that these are for one time things that aren't reoccurring. Mm -hmm. So how, I mean, I'm looking at public defender and how is that not reoccurring? Is that a, re a reoccurring expense after we do this or, I mean, I just, I see some of these that are one time that make, but is this all, this is all open for discussion and we can play around with it is that correct yeah okay correct yeah it's up to you guys okay and then um, when you go through all the things that have been already allocated in the proposal then you're we're saying we have 3.7 million 26 dollars or what yeah, left to allocate but it needs to be public health and economic impact. that's correct yeah and, and to your earlier question about you know a position that currently is not on the mm -hmm. payroll um, it's I think it's more of a question of is this position needed in the first place, which we believe it is, Probably and if so, is. can this jumpstart that sooner than later? And but Mayor, if if I could, yeah. the public defender is actually under contract, so oh, okay. this is actually a one-time expense in the idea that it would be expanding the existing contract. So when we went out to rebid, we'd re, you know, we'd basically expect the current level of service, but okay. it's not like adding a full-time employee to the city payroll. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, uh, Deputy Mayor Honda. Thank you. So um, since we started getting money from the government uh, when COVID started with CARES Act and everything else, how many vehicles have we purchased or do we plan to purchase, do you know? For, citywide? Citywide. I'm gonna look over to Public Works and Finance. Are you asking using funding out of this or in general? Funding that we received from the government because of COVID. Um, so out of ARPA, we purchased none. Out of the original CARES Act grant, we did purchase um, a number of the smaller trucks to get staff split up for parks, police, and public works, and I believe one for community development as well. Um, but I don't have an exact number off the top of my head. So uh, out of ARPA, we've got 28 police vehicles that we just approved uh, back in October, and those, are, and those are already, those are now in process. They're being, they, they've been ordered, they've been obligated. So my concern is, is that for all the vehicles that we've purchased since this started, we need to have enough money to put into the replacement funds and to keep the vehicles operating and running for what, at least seven years for police cars. Um, do we have that in the general budget or is this going to impact the general budget? In the future? In the future. Yeah, I, I think okay. some of them are new with the expansion of the, of the um, police officers. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was considered when we expanded the, 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 the proposal for police officers, I believe. If I'm That's correct. We had 13 officers and then the 28 vehicles was to also facilitate, uh, I believe, a, ta a take home program. And that would create uh, a, um, a replacement uh, 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 obligation on the city's part. Unfortunately, uh, ARPA has a specific rec uh, uh, prohibition against uh, using ARPA money for reserves. So we're going to have to be creative and be able to identify uh, city expenses that makes the city stronger uh, so that we can be able to budget in the future better for replacement. I'm not sure that you answered it um, the way that I'd like to hear an answer. So I imagine we'll find out when we're working on the budget next fall if we have the funds available to, to, um, to address my concerns. 
I would also um, say that I'm concerned about putting the money into the 373rd roundabout. To me, it's a state road, and I've been talking with Representative Jamila Taylor recently. She said that we told her we didn't need any additional funding from the state because we had the funding coming. I think it's a state road, and I would like to see the state put the funding into it. No, the actually, what, what actually happened was we went to Representative Taylor and asked for that funding, and then she asked so many questions that she was actually, uh, in a sort of a passive-aggressive way, opposing our efforts. So we went to go get the money elsewhere to where we wouldn't be totally reliant on our state legislator. So we, we found that money because we couldn't rely on Representative Jamila Taylor's uh, because she was uh, literally opposing us trying to get this money um, to save lives where multiple people had died. That's what happened. And after we got that money, we were able to then say, never mind. Okay. That's what happened. Um, and the street lights is, um, I know that there's a list of people around the city who would like street lights added to their neighborhoods. Is this to address that? It is. We were asked to develop a cost to um, complete all of the ones that have been um, ranked and evaluated and have passed the council adopted scoring, and that is 175 different locations. Some of those locations have multiple lights, so it's that's a low number. Um, so that is funding the installation of all of the open requests that have been evaluated and have met the scoring requirements. Does that cover every light on the list? every light that met the scoring requirements yes there's there are, we have received requests that do not meet the adopted scoring okay that never go on the list so oh, there okay. have been additional requests made over many many years that do not score high enough to even make the list initially so it does not include those it only includes ones that have met the guidance from council historically so the list that you're talking about is an approved list correct okay um so then who's responsible for paying the bill for that street light is it going to be the city or the neighborhood that it's going into for the electric i'm assuming yes mean? it'll be the city there'll be city owned and operated lights so okay. the annual cost for the electric is about sixty thousand dollars for all of these lights which we've already talked about with um director groom and that's going to have to be part of the budget process in the fall okay all right thank you very much Councilmember norton Okay, so regarding um, the community allocated funds, uh, will people who've experienced um, problems because of the rise in crime since COVID started uh, be able to apply for, let's say, broken windows and that kind of thing? Is that is that what we're looking at here with the with what's left, and then possibly paying back their PPP loans and things like that? Yeah, it, uh, it's a great question, um, and that's, uh, I don't have the fine details for you at this point because um, it's federal dollars, and if we're, you know, for example, broken windows, um, does, does the building have asbestos? And if so, we're using federal dollars to do asbestos, and there's additional guidelines for that. So it, there, we need to work out those details if we're talking specifically about um, building rehab for, to de dedicate these funds because of economic loss or to, to help um, community members. Um, we need to, if that's one of the things that the council wants, we need to do additional research to see if that's uh, eligible and then what would be the process to make it happen secondly. Okay, what about, I'm just thinking about um, the emails and things that I see about all the rise in crime and people having property damage um, and this is, something that rose exponentially with COVID and during COVID. And, and I'm just wondering if those people could possibly be helped with this. Um, our local business owners, uh, restaurateurs, you know, people who are having the smash and grabs happening. Um, if there is a way that we could possibly help them out and allocate some of this toward that, it, or is that I mean, can that be blamed on COVID? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, um, and I don't have an answer at this point because uh, we would need to specifically uh, um, link that up to the, the, the guidance from Treasury and make sure that it fits with that. And, and if it doesn't, if there's some other way that we can help them out where they do meet the, the criteria, 
Okay. So I, I, I hear what you're saying, and I think what the direction I need is, is that we need to look into that. It sounds like that's something that the council will be interested in. And so we can do that and, and come back with an answer uh, of how best to um, help those that have been affected by economic loss due to um, crime or, or other COVID-related um, issues. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh, sorry, thank you. Councilor Rodriguez. I, I guess I have a question on this public health and economic impacts. And I guess I'll make a statement, first of all. I mean, this seems to me like an opportunity for us to do some really creative things in federal way. So my question is, how do you know what the rules are for public health and economic impacts that's outside of the box, not what we've been doing in the past? something that could really impact our community. Are we able as a council to think of those things and then come to you and see if we want to do something totally weird or different? I, I, it, it doesn't hurt to ask to, to let us know what you're interested to see if we can then match it up so, with the eligibility. So, so here's, here's my yeah. question. You got gun violence as a key thing that the feds want us to work on, right? I'm, I'm thinking. And we have a community center that's underutilized by our citizens. I hear people all the time that say they can't afford to go. Kids are looking for places to go after school. We got a premier place in federal way. Could we use the money to give memberships to kids so they come to the community center, get trained on gun violence, have a place to go? I mean, do something totally different out of the box that nobody's thought about and be different than everybody else in all the other South King County because we're doing things for youth, helping the parents that don't have daycare, teaching about gun violence, and we're using our facility to its max. So the, on, on a I question, mean, I just pose that as a out-of-the-box idea. As an eligibility issue, are, are you prepared to answer that or something that we should have Steve Grubin? I, I, don't, I, um, I don't know if we can... Um, I, I, what I would recommend, Mayor, is that we get these ideas on the table okay. and then allow staff to do the research to see if we can link it up with the eligibility criteria. So, I, yeah, to, to Councilmember Doby's question, I mean, let's have all the ideas okay. that you have tonight. And then we'll, there's, I think there's a few on here that I would recommend moving on tonight. But if there's other ideas that you want to hold off on this list and then have us look at other ones that you don't see on here, then we can certainly do that. Okay, great. Uh, Councilmember Walsh and then uh, uh, Council President Hunt. Uh, Council President. So, uh, a couple of things. One is that the way it looks is that we have four years to spend the funds. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, just wanted to clarify that. And then something that did have uh, direct COVID related. Uh, what I'm thinking, one of the nonprofits I'm most familiar with is the uh, the Senior Center and the Senior Center Food Bank. Even though it flies outside of the city, it's still mostly federal way residents that are that are utilizing it and it's been <clears throat> greatly impacted because most of its funding has come from facility rentals which there hasn't been any there's been unable to be any and so would it fall within the guidelines to be able to, to provide some additional funding for it since they are way underfunded because of the no facility rental uh, income coming in <clears throat> yeah, we'll, okay we'll get on. all right Okay. Uh, Council President Kochmar. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I, I have a couple of questions and then a suggestion, um, which you probably already know, but I'll, I'll suggest it anyway. Um, so with the parks um, at what we need is $11 million for turf at Celebration Park so that our children can use that field when it's not being used for tournament play so that our actual citizens can use that. Uh, and also that will alleviate our problem with ma the huge maintenance costs. I think they're huge, but I don't have a number for that. So of that 11 million that's needed, only 2 million would be eligible under this program? We're proposing 2 million. 2 million, okay. <clears throat> so we're, um, Council Member Sefa Dawson and um, Deputy Mayor Honda and I'll be going to DC March 13th through the 15th. If you could prepare a letter that would um, stipulate what we need for the turf fields so that we can take it to Senator Murray, Senator Cantwell, yes. uh, and possibly Congressman Adam Smith, who's our congressman, and just say, because uh, when Councilmember Doby and I met with uh, Congressman Smith, he said possibly two million. But if we, if we could, what you really need is a letter that specifies what it is we're looking for in a bullet form. 
like we need nine million for turf fields and then and then itemize why and then our um, consultant our um, lobbyists federal lobbyists can go in and then each month keep reminding them that that's the money we need for our city and so we we need a targeted approach to get the money we need for that so yes we can, we can do that uh, when, you. when's your trip again march 13th through okay. the 15th yeah okay mm -hmm. okay so um the other thing i see at the bottom of this list is 320,000 for lta lot uh, lodging tax L lcac so what would that be used for 320,000 i'm just i'm fine i'm just curious what it's used for um, i believe that's just additional to, to help out what we already uh, have in the lodging tax fund okay. um, just uh, just additional <coughs> that they can apply for. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> so my uh, thinking for the council, because we have a lot of ideas, if we could just, do you want them in by email? Do Because we may not have all our ideas tonight, but um, yes. what time, what deadline do you need for us to well, submit our ideas? You th thank you for the question. I mean, we, we do have- <laughs> We have four years. Four years. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> but oh, I'm, I'm ready to go yes, right now. Yes, yeah, I, I, I totally agree. It'd be better to, uh, to act sooner than later. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, the sooner the better, but I, I, email would be ideal. Um, I'm not expecting you all to just have every sure. idea possible okay. tonight here live. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's things that you have in addition yeah. that you want to, then pl by all means, please uh, send them to me by email. Well, um, uh, along with Councilmember Norton, I'm also very interested in making sure that we get some money, whether it's from this pot of money or from our city uh, uh, general fund, uh, a pot of money that our, our um, businesses can apply for broken windows. I mean, it's called, you know, the broken window concept. The first thing you want to do is repair that broken window so you don't have more. And there's so many businesses in our city that have plywood on their doors, on their windows, and they're small businesses. They're not the major large companies. And I just think that we should have a general fund, a fund of some sort that our businesses can apply for that money. They can't go through their insurance. It increases their insurance. So I know that you know that. It's just we have $3.7 million that's not currently allocated. I'd like to see a portion of that going back into the business community who have been severely uh, impacted by crime and COVID-related issues because people have not been able to go to the businesses. So, and then I, as, as other council members have stated, Council Member Walsh, Council Member Dewey, talked about things that we need for perhaps the food bank or, or perhaps we need um, for the community center. M maybe just, I don't know if you can do a percentage of it or just let us know for each of our ideas, just you know, allocate mm -hmm. a certain amount of percentage or money from that 3.7 million so that we know what we're dealing with. And Yes, no, that would be wonderful, yes, thank you. Okay, but I'd love to see it going out real quick, not four okay. years. <laughs> yes, I, I, I totally agree. <coughs> thank you. Okay, um, first uh, Deputy Mayor Honda and then uh, Council Member Dewey. Uh, thank you. So quite a while ago I asked if we could put some of this money into a, I don't know what I called it, but a weekend once a month where the community center could be open for families or anyone who wanted to use it because for some it's just too expensive. And I don't know if anyone ever researched that on the staff, probably not, but we know that especially our young people are having mental health issues and it might be a, just a great place for kids to be able to come and, and, and swim or play basketball or do whatever it is that they'd like to do for free. And if we could do it once a month for a year, um, I think it would be a really awesome thing for, for the residents here in Federal Way. And also I was wondering if there is any way that we could use some of this for housing um, expenses for perhaps seniors who are <coughs> having issues with um, with their housing? Uh, yes, we will. We will. We'll take these down and we'll we'll come back to you on okay. on the the possibility of that. All right, because I don't want us to forget seniors. You know, we have as gosh, I'm a senior. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, we have a city full of, of senior citizens and with the rising cost of food and everything else and, you know, listening to the state legislature, it sounds like everything else is going to be rising with additional um, fees and taxes. It's a, it's a hard uh, hit for senior c citizens. 
And if we if we could do something to help, that would be awesome. All right, thank you. Uh, Councilmember Dovey? Oh, I oh. see your light on. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. All right, any other uh, suggestions? Mayor, if I, if I could, yeah, just, to, just to help uh, us make progression on this. Um, I talked with the department heads about what items on here. These are, I mean, this is if we had, we're all in agreement of spending the money today. And it's, it's great that we're going to have additional discussion. But if, there, if we could get indication from the council on the following items to, to get your approval for, for these funds, it would be um, helpful as we move forward with these needed expenditures and then also as we go into budgeting knowing what we're going to have to set aside for um, either general fund or other sources of, of revenue. So these are um, these are seven items. Um, it's the, the O-Court software, uh, the disaster backup, and then down in Public Works, two trucks and the salt stacker, and then in Parks, the three HVAC items. Uh, to help out with the air quality in all three buildings, as uh, w as we open back up, the air quality will be an increasing concern. As you see, we got you know temporary things to help out now, uh, but by by getting at the larger system, that will help out with the uh, overall air quality in all three of the buildings. So those are the seven that we would um, ask the council and recommend that the council approve for um, this evening, if you're comfortable. Um, and then we can add those, again, at the top of the list, there's four up there that have been um, approved by the council. We would then add those to the list and then have the remaining amount to discuss with the ideas that you've submitted tonight, and then we can prioritize those at a, at a future meeting. Uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Honda. Is there, uh, first of all, a reason that they need to be approved tonight? And since this is the first time council has seen this, I would say at least give us a couple weeks to go through this. I, We've, we've approved a lot of money so far, out, in my opinion, a lot of money out of this fund for various different things. And I would like us to take a really deep look at these recommendations and the other things that uh, council members have suggested before we start approving yes. things. So the if we could have yes. well, they, a couple they, they of can, weeks. They can wait, um, okay. just trying to, to move the discussion along. If you, if you want to take additional time to before you... Um, decide on that, that's, that's fine. Um, but we would like to, at, at maybe at the next discussion when we have this again, just have in mind that we're looking to at least uh, check off some of these uh, and then we can uh, slowly make progress on this. I, I would think that would be okay, but asking us tonight I think is um, not a good idea. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councilor Mayor yeah. and then um, yeah, I, I, Council I, President Kirsten. I have a little different opinion than what was just expressed. I mean, capital things like trucks and software and things like that we're going to buy them anyway probably so i'm not so sure i'd want to keep putting those type of things off but the question i have has to do with the the pool slide that's nine hundred eighty four thousand. i can't remember we put five hundred thousand in it do we have the other money in the budget or were we going to go raise that somewhere else yeah so that is um that is a um we did set aside 500000 That That was the estimate that we believed it was going to cost at the time we uh, came to the council for that amount. But it's but it's nine hundred eighty-four. It's Well, it's more than that because um, so we went out to bid. Um, the, the bid was not responsive, so we went out again. The one, sole responsive bid was uh, more than double that. Okay. So, so, so I guess... What I was going to say, my suggestion is, if we were in for a half million dollars for a slide for the community center, which is the flagship of our community, and this is one-time ARPA money to make our, and it passes and it's for our community, I don't know why we wouldn't just go for the whole 984 instead of have to say, let's go figure it out in the budget in October and when we have this money to do capital one-time things. I mean, that would, that's just my suggestion when I read these numbers, because we have a contingency of $2 million. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm all for moving things forward incrementally, and we have a long discussion about the social things and the gun control and all these programs, but capital things that are with chip issues and buying things that we know we're going to have to buy, I'm not sure we should say, i got to think about it for another two weeks. That's just my comment. 
Uh, Council President Kirchmar. Uh, thank you. I'm just wondering about procedure, Mayor. Um, since this is a special meeting, I don't think we can take action no. at a special no. meeting, but I think that perhaps, and maybe Council Member Mahondo has an idea, at our agenda setting meeting, we can talk about some of those items and then decide when to put them on for an action item at a regular meeting. Let's hear Ryan. So uh, that's correct. This is a special meeting. I don't believe when, when Brian is saying action, I think he's looking for a consensus, a direction from council on which items to bring back. All of this money has been appropriated in the budget under, in the general fund. Each of these items would have to come back to council for individual authorization. The point is we don't want to bring things back piecemeal and then have them be rejected piecemeal, which has been the frustration that the deputy mayor has expressed and others that we're handling these piecemeal. So we're trying to present all of them to you and get kind of a consensus that these are the items to bring back. Well, maybe this is something we can talk at our agenda setting meeting and try to move forward and then bring it back at another special meeting but it, and get some of them approved at a regular meeting. Is, it, is that all right? Yeah. Yes. Brian? Action will have to ha happen at the regular, regular meeting. Yeah. Okay. So then we can take yeah. that yeah. into account as well. I just, I see, I just uh, rather move faster than slower on some of the yeah. capital things, personally. I see Council yeah. Member Norton's lay on. I, I just had a question about the pack upgrades. Um, do you know what the current bookings are for 2022-2023 for the pack? Um, is it solvent? Is it being booked? And it is money? being booked. I don't have the uh, exact bookings in front of me right now, but I can get that information for you um, in a very timely manner. Um, so I can get I can get the bookings um, going forward. Uh, things are definitely bouncing back. We just had a sold out event, uh, not this past Saturday, not Super Bowl Saturday, but the Saturday before. We had a 100% sold out event comedy show. So things are, are definitely bouncing back and coming back uh, strong as COVID okay. begins to wane. Uh, audience confidence and artist confidence is coming back. So things are definitely picking up. Where can I go to find a list of the upcoming events at the PAC? You can go to the Federal Way PAC website, okay. P-A-E-C uh, website, and uh, look, search events, and it's right on the top. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Deputy uh, Mayor Honda. John, I have a question about what you just said. So you said the PAC was um, sold out for an event, which is awesome. Does that mean, are we, because of COVID, are we spacing people like every nope, other that seat? was 713 seats sold. So we're not we're not doing um, any special things. That for group COVID? did not. There was no required social distancing. Hmm. Okay, thanks. All right, Council. Any other uh, questions or comments? Brian, do you have anything else? Okay. Um, well, Council. Um, so I guess uh, the the takeaway is we'll. Uh, for the follow-up, uh, Brian, can you talk, talk about yeah, how you're so, going to follow up? Yes, so we've got the, obviously the meeting's recorded. We'll go back and, and, and uh, capture your comments, but there's a, if there's anything else that you want to either double up through an email or um, send us that was not discussed tonight, then please do so. You can send it to me directly. Okay. Uh, Council Member Walsh. Yeah, just one comment. Something that was just brought up. I mean, the pack, there was a sold-out thing, 700 and something seats, no social distancing. So why are we having this set up, social distancing here? I believe it was a private event, so. So I can answer that. So um, the, there are different types of venues is the short answer. So I believe everyone that goes to a PAC show has to prove uh, vaccination status. Um, you can't, you're not admitted unless you're vaccinated. This, that is not a requirement of these meetings. So we're trying to basically um, set up this room in a way that assumes people aren't vaccinated. All right. Any other discussion? All right. Uh, we uh, right now the uh, we've got 45 minutes till our council uh, meeting begins. Uh, this special meeting is adjourned.